So it seems to be in the show that there's so much, not just about electric vehicles, chargers and all of those things, but the bigger picture from that. So tell me what you guys are doing here. Yeah, so uh, we're only, we're a smart thermostat specifically designed for heat pumps. And uh, it, we started off our journey on the other side of the puzzle. So a lot of people were looking at the EV charges. We started off with the heating because we saw that as being a massive bit that we need to make a change about. So some people, might, that, that, doesn't, that seems like a bit of a disconnect. You started looking at how to charge EVs through your heat pump. There's not charging the, uh, as you're saying, it's not charging the EVs through the heat pump, but it's just thinking ballistically about the, the problem. So I, uh, I started my journey uh, doing a PhD, looking at all the electricity loads in the network and trying to see what is going to happen when we have a lot more electric loads, like the heat pump, like the EV, uh, like anything else in your house uh, that is drawing power at similar times. And if too many of us, for example, plug in the kettles into the power socket, uh, that can cause issues on the networks, the cables that are bringing it to your home. Uh, this is where my journey uh, started. And this is when I started looking at heat pumps. Heat pumps is uh, one of the ways that we can decarbonize our heating. And uh, heating alone accounts for almost half of all the uh, domestic energy uh, emissions. And this, uh, we need to do something about it. And uh, we need to move away from using boilers to heat our homes to renewable technologies, which is heat pump currently is seen as, the, uh, as one of the ways to actually decarbonize the heating and get, uh, reduce those carbon emissions. Um, and this is, uh, as I mentioned, it's not that we use a heat pump to heat the EV, but it's that these devices that are in the house that are all using electricity, they need to be, uh, they need to know about each other, that they exist, what they're doing, and how they're using power. Um, so journey for us starts with a heat pump, uh, where we want to make sure that people that are installing a heat pump uh, can run it in the most efficient way possible, so that uh, we we can maximize the benefits of a heat pump for the customers and they get the comfort for less. Uh, after that, the things that we're looking into at the moment is uh, the whole house optimization. So uh, this is that uh, a kind of end goal to have a whole house talking to each other. So uh, we have testing house where a PV system is being monitored uh, that is talking to a domestic battery uh, and uh, you have the heat pump and then there is the EV. If they're not talking together, uh, they might all be seeing that, uh, I mean, there, there's loads of optimization out there in the market. And all of these different devices could be saying that I can see that there is a little bit of PV that is gonna be available this afternoon. I should be drawing on that and putting it into the EV, putting it into the heat pump. But if they're all seeing the same signal and they're not actually talking to each other, saying that I actually need that PV load <laughs> rather than you, uh, then all of the, when they all turn on at the same time, first one is going to get it, but the, less, uh, the rest are going to be just be using electricity from the grid. Okay. This is where Homely is moving. So uh, we, already have, uh, we already have the algorithms that can do this. Uh, we are testing it, and uh, it's a proposition that is going to come to the market in the near future. It's fascinating because we've said all along that owning an EV is far more than just owning a car. It's about your lifestyle. And this is, this is really just looking, just broadening that picture, isn't it? And looking at the whole thing holistically. How do we use our energy? How does our home, transport, everything connect? Yes. And uh, it, it comes back to the idea that, um, the, so from, the, from a customer's perspective, we want to, we want to have comfort. Uh, we want to do it with ease. So I don't need to, for example, run around the house, turning the stuff on and off, because I know that the electricity is going to be slightly cheaper. We want, so it's the ease of use and the comfort and uh, that, that's, that's what brings benefit to us. So uh, once we have those things, uh, we install all, all the kit in the house, we have a PV, we have a heat pump, um, we come, into the, uh, come back home, uh, plug in the uh, electric vehicle, we have an electricity tariff that has cheaper prices throughout the night. I know that something there in the cloud uh, is gonna take a decision to charge up that battery so that I can use the cheaper electricity. Yeah. Uh, less carbon intensive electricity throughout the day. Uh, I know that the heat pump is going to make decisions to use up some of that cheaper electricity as well. Uh, that's what home is try, uh, trying to provide. And that's just the first step. So uh, that's from the customer's perspective what we want to deliver to the customer. But as we move forward, the more electric loads we're going to have on the network, 
it's going to be more important that we do it in a smart way yeah. so that we don't need to uh, instead of building new power plants uh, we can utilize power that is being produced by renewable sources and uh, that's where uh, actually my journey started uh, I was looking at the whole electricity grid trying to understand what can we do to coordinate these devices around the whole of the country and make them kind of uh, say that I'm I have I might have a slightly more leaky house so I can store heat as long as you can um, and uh, basically you can store you can preheat your house a little bit earlier in the day so that uh, we can manage that uh, electricity consumption better throughout the day It's been a really interesting day here at Fully Charged, actually. There's all the things that you would expect. You know, there's home chargers, there's charging leads. Um, there's, you know, the RAC telling us how good they are for breakdown cover. Um, there's even Dennis here with a, an electric rubbish truck. But what has surprised me, I think, is the bigger picture stuff, is there's so much about, if you like the word holistic, there's so much about, okay, now the car is connected to the home. What do we do with the home? So looking at our energy use as a big whole system from, you know, whether we've got <clears throat> solar or heat pumps to bring it in, um, when we charge, how we charge, um, what time of day we're um, you know, bringing in electricity, what time of day we're using electricity, thinking about the whole of our ecosystem, if you like, as, uh, as one unit, seems to be where we're headed. It's really interesting. Well, there's one category that's conspicuously ab absent, and that's cheaper cars. The whole industry is going through convulsions and it's very difficult to predict where that will end up. But and I think, unfortunately, they've got their heads slightly in the sand about what is actually going to happen over the next five years. You know, it's going to be over 200, 250 different makes and models of electric vehicles. Do you want to have a go at the government or shall I? 